A provocative question. Would you believe scientific confirmation over government or military disclosure? After decades of non-disclosure, poorly researched government reports, ignoring the evidence, hiding behind national security secrets, shielding freedom of information requests by farming out physics and technological breakthroughs to private companies and defense contractors in an orchestrated attempt to hide the truth. Where has this got us? Um, precisely nowhere. But the truth is out there. Global witnesses, images, even injuries from people who got too close to the unknown. So forget you will learn the truth from organizations who are protecting their own secrets. They don't want to tell you. They become more powerful by keeping this stuff secret. And some secure rich contracts by weaponizing the strange. How do we cut through that crap? To find out what UFOs really are, how they work, and where do they come from? One possible answer is by studying the science of their known characteristics. By studying that data, we can have confirmation. But there is a problem. Universities doing physics are more and more funded by military contractors, building laboratories with binding non-disclosure agreements. TV and mainstream media are in desperate death throes, no longer making thought-provoking science series, but churning out over-sensational pseudo-science Bollocks. What does that leave to confirm the real science, the real witness accounts, the real evidence? Well, congratulations, you are part of the answer. Right here, right now, social media. The Sol Foundation, the SCU Scientific Coalition of UAP Studies, the Galileo Project, MUFON, and similar organizations all over the world. They will provide genuine evidence of confirmation. But don't forget your powerful skills. Social media science, asking questions, sharing ideas, distributing your photographs, describing your evidence. That's where humble YouTube investigators come in to carry the flag of truth, to open doors to the unknown, to pull back the curtain from the wizards manipulating society. So today, let's look at evidence of how a tiny, unfunded YouTube creator might well be the place that you and the world discover the truth. But stop, this is not as simple as the case that I've just painted for you. YouTube is not peer-reviewed. YouTube makes mistakes. This fascinates me. So today, let's look into one of the most intriguing cases of the highly strange. The case of the Malaysian airliner MH370 and scalar weapons. You and I have all seen this. They first circle around the plane, and then they start this, this pattern where they're now in a ring formation, vertically around it. And then watch what happens here with the zap, poof, right? And when we look at it in the thermal, which we'll look at in a second, we can see that, that they're closing in at the last second. Now the smoke trail just stops right there. But we've also heard this. Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 disappeared in 2014. Shortly after, two videos hit the internet. There you have it. It's a weird one. It is a weird one. Wouldn't that be cool if that was real? Wouldn't that be cool if that was real? So let's talk to the YouTube creator who brought you that story. Let's learn what he did wrong and why putting his film out there led to both a roller coaster year of nasty trolls, but ultimately led him to a bigger truth about the science of the highly strange. Please welcome. Ashton Forbes. So today, let's not talk about flying saucers. Let's talk about how you and I actually present evidence to our audience. 
So first of all, a, a bit of background if people don't know, you know, wh why are you doing this? Why are you on social media and what, what is your background? Yeah. Hey, Professor Simon, thanks a lot for having me on. I'm really excited about this conversation. And uh, I was actually never really big on social media in general. Just I'm never into it or anything like that. Um, but I've been following this uh, UFOlogy kind of uh, realm for the last five or six years, mm. uh, lurking, watching videos, trying to figure out what the nature of this is all about. Uh, I, I'm not 100% convinced that there's aliens out there, but I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised just based on the size of the universe that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to know more about the science, and I wanted to know about how the science operates. And so for me, my emergence of social media has been related to what people refer to as the MH370 videos, which yeah. seem to show an airplane being teleported out of the sky, possibly annihilated, but zapped out of the sky. Right. And I wanted to figure out how that worked. And as I've been going on this journey the last seven months, I have uh, run into a lot of different scientists who reached out to me, engineers that are either directly work with the government or are contractors um, that either directly or indirectly told me that this type of stuff is possible and we have this capability. And so my what I've been doing is digging right. into it too, because it's what I found out is that this phenomenon is a lot about a lot more than just aliens and, and flying saucers. This is about the technology behind it, how it can change it wor our world and what it right. means for our world. Right. Oh, completely. Uh, oh, oh, uh, ditto. <laughs> I mean, if, if I have to put like a, you know, uh, name what my channel does, is it's exactly the same, <laughs> is looking at the science. And often the science of the highly strange um, can actually reveal, um, by studying what they do, we can actually work out how they do it. And so, so much of uh, media doesn't look behind ufology, doesn't look behind the flying saucer, but it's really important here on social media science, here on a non-broadcast uh, medium, that people are actually, myself, actually ask questions. And I, th I think that's great. I think it's really interesting about the uh, Malaysian airliner because what you obviously revealed whether it's true or not, it doesn't actually effing matter because the possibility of how that could happen raises issues. I mean, what I mean, what do you think might what kind of technology could be involved? I mean, it, you know, the big question would it could it be a human weaponization of those kind type of forces? Yeah, and what and what are the implications there? And then how do you get right. that information out? So you know what I've discovered, mm -hmm. just, and this is my own independent research, and from the people that I've talked to, is that there's yeah. something out there called scalar physics, um, right. and and scalar physics is the idea that it goes all it goes all the way back to Tesla that we can create an infer uh, inferometry uh, inferometry. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. No, no. Um, which is uh, kind of a crossing the stream so to speak in ghostbusters and we can actually right. either induce an energy field out in a distance or we can suck energy from a specific location out there right. and if you think about the implications right. and how we might be able to advance this technology um and that this is going back from thomas bearden in the 80s and how oh, right. far we might have come from then and the implications of this type, type of technology are huge. Um, right. The reason why I got attracted to your content was I was actually watching your faster than light communication video regarding SETI uh -huh. and this idea that we might be right. communicating, getting signals from right. uh, other other species that are out there in the universe. And right. the faster than light communication is, some, is something that I've had my mind open to for well over 10 years, even before I was looking at UFO stuff, where I just thought, mm -hmm. hmm, I wonder if this is actually possible. And if right. we can do faster than light communication, I mean, we, I have no problem believing it's real because the double slit experiment essentially proves non-locality is a real thing. Right. Whether or not we understand it, that's the big question. Sure. And then the implications are, what else can we do? We can, if we can do that to a small object, can we do that to a large object? Oh, can we make a force field with this? Can we cloak something with this? Can we, does this right. mean that we can achieve over unity, that space is not empty, that there's an extra dimension out oh. there? And, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the last thing I want to say too is that yeah, um, yeah. you know, in UFOlogy, I find that there's like nobody doing this. Like you are one of the people right, out there that's right. actually looking into the science, talking to people out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think if there was more people doing this, I think that the ball could kind of roll down the hill a little bit faster in UFOlogy to get to disclosure. Because I think we both agree. I, I don't think that the government's ever going to give us this. 
you look at the implications of this stuff, this is national security issue. This is national defense issue. This could be like a weapon. This has got so many right. applications. Right. Incredible. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, you've raised so many good topics there. Yeah, a weapon, national security, and exploitation. Uh, what I'm hearing is, of course, uh, it is being highly studied. And uh, the term, the weaponization of UAP, keeps on coming up from military defense contractors I speak to. And they actually want to study the phenomenon. The, you know, it is closely studied because it, it, it possibly could be weaponized. You know, we live in an era now ever since the Manhattan Project, where Pandora's box was opened with the Trinity test, be using a blackboard equation, E equals MC squared, which didn't work, <laughs> and they made a gadget, they made a bomb. So um, we now live in a world of men behind curtains who are using scalar and advanced physics and UAP and anything they can possibly uh, imagine or not imagined, um, to um, weaponize. And I think um, certainly UAP phenomenon and its, yeah, and its physics is deeply studied. And I think that's one of the reasons that governments and militaries aren't going to disclose it, because so much of, of the weaponization of UAP is held by defense contractors who are not part of FOIA, Freedom of Information, and they are busy beavering away looking at weird stuff in case it could be a next contract for them um um and i think nobody's talking about it people like you are doing a great job and uh, hopefully i'm digging into the same kind of subject because we can do this but it raises a question i mean what happened i mean so much of what we glean what we put together two and two equals five we might f up we might actually get things slightly wrong but in some ways it doesn't matter because we're raising the issues i mean in the malaysian airline case the technology the possibility of that technology is fascinating whether it happened doesn't actually really matter. You raised the point. It's now in it's in the public awareness. Well done. Yeah, and that's the thing too, where you know, people have asked me, you know, well, how much do the videos matter regarding the case? And there's so much evidence on the side of it too, just right out about surveillance capabilities and stuff yeah. like that, where it's mm -hmm. like, I don't even need the videos anymore. No, something weird happened here. And then the point of the videos is like, well, right. even if somehow those videos weren't real, they're showing physics that people out there are saying is real, that scientists are coming to me. Right. And we look at it from my perspective, especially where somebody I knew, I mean, I it was interested in physics and science, but mm. I was never as deep into it as I have been the last five or six months. This has been a complete awakening for me. I've learned more about electrical yeah. engineering in six months than I probably could have learned in four years at university. And I'm hoping to learn a lot more, but like you said, we can get stuff wrong. I'm not infallible. I'm still learning this in general. Right. Um, but I, the concepts do seem to check out when you dig into the, the math, when you dig into the yeah. history of it. Yeah. Uh, and that's what's pretty scary, I think, is that it's been out there for decades. Uh, and when you look at the videos, and I think for me, the awakening, and I think everybody kind of has their own awakening, is that it's yeah. like when you see the, the, the uh, answer sheet from the teacher where they say, here's the answers. And now you're like, OK, I got to figure out how we get mm -hmm. to that answer because I was not going to get full marks. And that's what it feels like when I saw those videos is now I have to figure out how that science works. You right. figure out how it does work. Like you said, um, it yeah. absolutely is a matter of the defense contractors and special access programs mm -hmm. having this technology. It's it's hidden under FOIA. It, it can't be found out by the government. You can't the public can't find out about it. it's protected. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is the issue where I think even Congress in the United States doesn't really understand the full implications of what's going on here because right. it's a lot about a lot more than just crash retrievals and, and alien bodies, although that would absolutely be huge. But the technology side of it is the Pandora's box where yep. you are going to get potentially medical healing capabilities. We can get cool stuff like invisibility cloaks. We can get over unity and free energy. But <laughs> yeah, but even with that, then we get this right. weapon of potentially mass destruction. Imagine, you know, yeah. we just had this earthquake in Taiwan yesterday, 7.5. Mm. That's Massive. a very large earthquake. Mm. Mm. Imagine if we can create a scalar potential that can shake the earth or, you know, at the specific fault right. points where it's not necessarily maybe producing earthquakes, but what if it can, you know, uh, e e edge yeah. them along, like closer to uh, potentially happening, or maybe even like, amplify them to a degree these thoughts right. are pretty scary and, and have right. huge world implications so 
The last thing I want to say is I, I don't like revealing secret capabilities of my own government. I wish I was revealing China's capabilities or Russia's capabilities, but right. that's just not where the investigation is led. And so, you know, anyway, go ahead. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. You lie awake in bed having the same thoughts as I do. Um, you know, the, the issue, where do we, uh, how close do we overstep a mark on something which is actually, you know, dangerous to national security? I mean, I try and draw a line, but I'm more than willing to describe the physics of what they might be uh, playing with, messing with, or building. Or um, As soon as it's um, officially deployed, I'm kind of, oh, maybe I should mention this. Um, yeah, certainly, in we've been doing a, a big deep dive into this very strange case that happened in England called Rendlesham Forest. And um, the more I look into it as a journalist, as a science uh, broadcaster, um, asking the obvious question, who, what, where, when, and why, uh, the answers are stunning. And um, But we have an issue here, is that uh, I actually know pretty well, between you and I and the world on social media, what happened. And I feel actually right now, today, in um, you know, in April in 2024, reluctant to actually say, because it actually is uses technology which is which is secret and so um you know how do we how do we as social media uh creators cope with hidden secrets and 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 science i mean do we just reveal it all or you know it's it's a it's it's an interesting issue um and i think viewers should really appreciate uh you know a little bit what we're doing because we're prepared to really investigate i'm sure during the malaysian story when people started uh saying it's not possible you like i do went out of your way to look stuff up and go actually you know what uh, what i'm actually saying here might work you know it's it is potentially possible is, is that a process that you go through Oh, yeah, 100 percent on every aspect. You know, I think that we I would say early on, too, that the the bunker types out there actually help progress the investigation forward, because every time they would say this right. doesn't make sense, we would look into it and we would find more information. Like one of the earliest things was we right. found the satellites that were staring right down at the plane at that location where it's like, well, how does the United States not know we've got lower Earth orbit satellites staring at the place where the plane supposedly turned in the South Indian Ocean? They go, well, how can this be a satellite? It's not. We don't see enough apparent movement. And so we go look into it and we right. find out, oh, well, there's this system called SIBRS, Space Based Infrared System. There's a ground based computer that's taking information from all the satellites and potentially building like a Google Earth, but like video military playback capability. And then you go, oh, oh wow, that actually makes sense because oh, yeah. we have Google Earth. That was decades ago of course mm -hmm. the military should have at least this capability and it's not the 90s anymore so it's not like enemy of the state where you're like looking straight down through a satellite right. um and then we find out as well that you know it makes sense because when you look at the videos you don't see the coordinates moving around so if the uh -huh. coordinates aren't moving around it's not a satellite that's, that's moving right. it's got to be in a fixed location and they're using a computer program for that so you find out about stuff like that and you're like okay wow this just oh. makes it even more credible for me in general and then the science side of it, this is the part where even just the last few weeks, uh, I've been digging uh, into the scalar physics right? and finding out that, you know, if you zero out your electromagnetic potentials, your electric potential and magnetic potential, it's not that there's nothing left over. There's something still there. And this is uh, where you get this scalar potential, which can be right. used to manipulate gravity. Um, there may be other ways to pull off gravity manipulation, but that is theoretically one of them. And the implications of that are absolutely like huge. Massive, massive. And oh, I, and oh I, that's very impressive. Yeah, I uh, uh, I um, often get uh, emails, which I can't really reveal who they're from, who um, talk about just those things. And um, w I can up completely confirm from what I know about um, LEO low Earth orbit satellites using um, synthetic aperture radar, which is at an angle. That your oblique angle on um, on on an aircraft um, isn't enemy of the state uh, is in fact you can do all the computing through dimensional rotations and angles and perspective changes you want because there's enough information from uh, multiple SAR radars to actually build the picture that you actually presented. So yeah, 
I mean, but I mean, you know, do you talk about that? Well, I just did. But yeah, no. So well, that's the that's the point, too. Right. Is that nobody knows about that. But when you start to just think right. about it intuitively and logically, you go, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. And then you start to wonder, like, why you've got people in your DMs and your replies. They're like, yeah, yeah, we can do this. And this is like old technology. It's even probably even better now in terms of our surveillance capabilities. Um, and to to your point, you know, the scalar physics can also prove faster than light communication, because oh, okay. if you think that our reality, if you imagine there's another dimension to our reality, uh, an underlying mm -hmm. construct, Tesla would have called it the ether that's out there. Mm -hmm. The speed of light is only constant because it's, it's uh, permeating through the vacuum primitivity of free space, the, right. our reality that's around us. If you were to strip that away, mm -hmm. just like if you were to take a laser and shoot it through water, you're going to see this refraction. Right. And if you you know take it away from the water, now you're going to see it going through space. Imagine the same thing, but we take away reality. And now we have this underlying framework where, especially if you look at quantum physics, it would say that every point is connected. Now the speed of light is no longer constant. The speed of light can actually be faster in the ether than it is potentially in free space. And this is where, in my mind, you can start to rationalize how faster than light communication can be possible. And I think that this stuff, I dug into the history of this and like... Yeah. All of this goes back decades. And that yeah. was the part that kind of blew me away because I'm sitting here thinking, first of all, if this is real, there's got to be a history right. to it. And there is. Right. And then I'm like, they've been hiding this for decades and the world just doesn't know. But what you find out is that there has been people out there talking about it. They just get discredited and ignored. And I think this is something that you've probably struggled with where you find out that people just discredit you. They attack you personally. Mm. They don't really attack the ideas. Right. And then people ignore it. And then I've realized that, and I'd like to have your opinion on this, is that yeah. I don't think disclosure is even about proving the science or providing evidence. I think that evidence is already out there. I think mm. it's a matter of us raising our collective conscious right. to a point where people can begin to accept that it's possible, to accept that it's real. Oh, right. Yeah, well said. Yeah, no, I... Um completely on the same hymn sheet um yeah no, first of all our uh, perception of reality is very limited as humans i think um our um advanced physics is far more advanced than you realize um i think that certainly a lot of things are being looked at and examined i mean i, th I think the uh the quantum physics totally changed um human um perception of our universe but it's really interesting quantum physics because most people are still talking about newton and his effing apple i mean so many people don't actually understand it there's very poor communication in understanding it uh the idea the whole concept of of quantum um probability you know it seems to me that that faster than light travel is 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 potentially possible because you've got a, an actual quantum wave that can tunnel through things and can be in two places instantane, instantaneously over over millions of miles. And my inside knowledge of what I've been reading is that um, faster than light radio communication or non-radio in fact uh quantum tunneling or faster than light uh, uh communication is absolutely necessary um there's so many weapon systems now that you can't actually control um by um uh speed of light rf communication you actually need to have faster control over many uh hypersonic weapons and things like that it's just it's just crazy and then as soon as we start mm -hmm. stepping off our planet and going to mars i mean do we really want to wait for 30 minutes to hi mom you know it's a long time to wait for a reply um uh yeah no i think faster than light communication it, to a certain extent is exists and i think people are working on it now completely and yeah. that's the kind of thing that we need to reveal isn't it <laughs> yeah oh 100 percent. this is why i why i watched your video and i immediately went okay. and i spent like four hours digging into gunter nimitz and looked oh, up yeah. uh, all the the papers articles backstory about him there was uh forums that i found where people were talking about his work mm. and right away i had the i call it my spider sense intuition that there's yeah. something legitimate here Really? where you don't find a lot of stuff about him, but you find these people who are like really excited to look at his work. One person talking about he was going to do a presentation back in 2005, 2006, mm -hmm. and he just no-showed. Mm -hmm. And that was like, he just disappeared mm -hmm. off the face of the earth. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, that's pretty weird. And then 
the skeptics say, oh, it's because he was afraid he would get exposed. And then the people on my side of my type of thinking go, no, it's because he's being suppressed. And sure right. enough, in 2019, right. two people did it in a physics uh, competition in Germany, I believe it was, they oh, proved yeah. that his theory was real and that there is this, uh, you know, fa faster than light kind of sure. uh, evanescent wave, they call it, that's essentially happening between the prisms. And that might only just be one method of faster than light communication as well. So... For sure. me, I think that's really interesting, but it begs the question, which we don't want to go too much into, but I am curious as your thoughts is mm -hmm. uh, the idea of retrocausality. Because if you look at the double oh. slit experiments and the uh, delayed choice quantum eraser, yeah. you find that there is, even though people claim this is debunked, it's it's not, is that the future does seem to impact the past, according to the experiment. You can right. glean information right. about where an entangled photon is going to appear before it even gets to the randomizer based right. on the second and the first detector which it hit to right. me i look at that i go whoa this is bizarre because this means in my mind that yeah time is an illusion that it's not linear like we perceive it right and that it's more of like a circle or as you would say from the uh true detective the uh, time is a flat circle and that makes me wonder about okay, okay you know what does fashion like communication mean can we send mm -hmm. messages to the past i don't know if you've had thoughts on this type of thing before oh no I just think we've got physics a bit wrong and we're we're you know we're we are the cavemen living in the cave next door to my house i mean i think we're good at painting pictures of animals and we have flickering flickering lights uh but we're still living in a time of myth and legend i think we need to break out of that and it just worries me that so much of it is being done um not with public cooperation or understanding um poorly communicated hidden behind curtains and and funded specifically by weapon makers or people who want to control that physics. I think we live in an amazing era that nobody understands. And I think that's really important um, that your channel and a little bit of my channel and other good channels are talking about um, difficult questions and trying to also, you know, struggle with trying to make them explainable and finding library pictures to illustrate. I mean, I mean, it, it's it it's a real challenge as a creator to bring this subject to the public, but uh, educating the public on what's really going on and not just being puppets manipulated by somebody pulling their strings and selling them a new iPhone that they don't even know how it works. I mean, we're living in a dark <laughs> age, in my opinion. Um, you know, keep up the good work. You need, you need, you need to expand people's minds. Um, it, it it's great. So, I mean, um, what do you think's going on in the world of um, military and physics? Do you, do you actually buy the idea that we're living in a world in, in a in a society that's that's being weaponized? Um, oh, by yeah. Yeah. I look at it, and I think, you know, I feel like we're in the movie Idiocracy. Like what you just said as well is that I, I think that we are we are cavemen. I, I've said this for a while. That it feels like we are cavemen yeah. that just discovered fire who now think that we've got it all figured out. Yeah. But the reality is there's still this much further to go. You know, we are still just at the beginning because right. uh, figuring out a unification theory of quantum and macro and general relativity and quantum right. field mechanics will change yeah. everything. And even right. then, that's just the beginning, I feel like. Then it's a matter of miniaturizing it, using AI to optimize it and yeah. start to be able to do all kinds of magical effects that are out there. It, yeah. it makes me think that from the public perception, the media right. perception, I think we're going backwards. I don't even feel like we're going forwards. And this is the part that scares me where mm. I think this is the reason why the scientists and engineers have reached out to me that want me to help get the information out there because mm. we reached like a post-truth world where now like nothing can be believed to be real right. and people don't believe it even when it comes from officials. Right. Um, and then this is a part where it's like, you've got magical technology. The public has no idea we're still using gas powered cars. How do you wake people up to the reality of what we really have out there? Right. Um, right. And so absolutely, I agree with you on all of those fronts that you just said. I think that my question is, uh, you know, in terms of what I still think about is whether or not we've achieved this ourselves or if we've had some type of help in order mm -hmm. to find this physics out. Maybe that's why there's this gap between, you know, the public perception versus what we really have uh, out there. And then the challenge yeah. that I have is how far do you step into what would be called the woo? on it because right. this is like magic like i actually the lines between reality and fiction start to blur for me especially from mm. from two different areas 
from the conspiratorial aspect in terms of yeah. can, a, a, can a, a country hijack an entire airplane and convince the whole world that it's right. some kind of suicide narrative that makes no sense? The answer seems to be yes, which is like, okay, well, then what else can they convince people of? <laughs> and then the other side of it is the science side of it, which right. is that they can potentially suppress this science for decades out right. there. And if this, if you can, you know, create force fields and all this other stuff, does that mean we can remote view? Does that mean that psych, you know, um, psychic powers are potentially real? And you know, this stuff starts to come back into the fold. And I try to draw the line. And right now that line is scalar weapons might actually be able to cause earthquakes, which is right. hard to understand and believe. But like that's I mean, a lot of this stuff's a bridge too far for people. But I think that saying you can teleport a plane already is for a lot of people. So I'm not too worried about it at this point. <laughs> Oh no no it, it, it it's fantastic it's great because um you know some of it um all of it will have been studied all of it will have been uh, uh looked at as a possibility um certainly if you go back to uh you know N Nikola Tesla as you mentioned i mean certainly his w world view of 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 physics was very different and um you know he's deeply mired in conspiratorial uh woo and uh you know we 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 need to um break it down and and actually explain it and understand it i mean i think i also really do think that we are um pretty stupid as as a race and i think that um but maybe we're being um we're being kept stupid and i think we need to educate people but um i think the the unification of quantum and macrophysics is massively not done uh string theory seems a bridge too far of just maybe even a distraction from what people are really thinking about and i think we need to um you know um really have another big um quantum leap i hate that word but a big leap into the future of of better physics um and so um please uh mr alien come down and tell us <laughs> what's actually going on that would be brilliant and it, it, it might stop some of our petty squabbles too if we've got got a common enemy to focus on <laughs> that's why i look at it too is this idea that mm -hmm. this can be a unifying force not just uh, yeah. you know metaphorically but also that we you know right. from humanity's perspective we can find a common purpose to you know i think jfk in my opinion was the last great leader in the united states who oh. um, inspired people in this way mm -hmm. to be better to achieve things and uh, i think that with this kind of science we can then figure out how do we improve our civilization the scary part there is I think that we could destroy ourselves very easily with this. And people go, oh, well, we already have nukes, but this is so far well beyond nukes. This is what where I'm trying to push the conversation forward so people realize mm. the true dangers of this and, and kind of the road, the cro the road, uh, the crossroads that we're at right now in terms of this can be our ruin, this can be the Fermi paradox, this can be why civilizations wipe themselves out. Or this can be, you know, a new golden age uh, for us in general. I get scared about stuff like you just mentioned too, about like we could be a prison planet where there's this uh, omnipotent uh, oh. race that is actually ruling over us with technology that's just beyond magical to us that mm. could easily mm. hide themselves from us, manipulate the fabric of our society. Uh, certainly seems possible, but. You know, I, I try to keep everything as grounded as I can in the science. It's, and yeah. that's because I want people to be able to listen. The drama and the clickbait and stuff is what draws the attention. And you do kind of have to lean into that because you want people mm. to look at the important stuff and the important science. Sure. But you really want to make sure that it's grounded in, you know, good science that, that can check out. Whether or not it seems like it's, it's difficult or in the woo or whatever, that's one aspect. Mm. But, you know, this type of stuff that we're talking about is promoted or supported by... Uh, empirical physics, experimental science that people have actually yeah. performed, yeah. but a lot of it's in special access programs. So this is where it becomes difficult to bridge the gap between trust right. me, bro, so to speak. And yeah. I've got sources and stories versus oh. Oh. the mainstream physics and mainstream science that's you know out there. And I don't think CNN's ever going to 
talk about like any of this kind of stuff that we, you know, people like you or I uh, no, put on. No, our well, no, I mean, I think they, they almost have a kind of a duty not to in a, in a way, but that's also blocking it. I mean, I think that's, we're in a fantastic blast, a uh, great position to actually, you know, be able to raise topics um, that uh, other traditional media wouldn't touch with your barge pole, because, you know, if you don't have verification, if you don't have multiple sources for the story, you probably wouldn't run it. I mean, that's, Certainly, you know, when I worked at the BBC, we never did a UFO story, even although, you know, they were massive at the time and always have been um, because it was just seen as hilarious and stupid. Uh, no, it I, 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 yeah, it really, yeah, to, to, total ridicule. And it's a, it's a, there's so many good questions. And it's not just about UFOs, as you say, it's about, it's about hum where we as humans fit in and and, and understand the, a truer nature of of our universe and of our perception of reality is is what we're really um, studying. Exactly. What is your thoughts on the UFO community in general? I mean, I'm pretty new to this community. Like last six months, and yeah. my opinion, like when I first joined, I, I didn't know if their people were controlled by the government and if they're being manipulated or if these were just, you know, the turn. What I've come to conclude now, personally, is that I just think that everybody's got their own path, their own opinions, and yeah. we've got this tangled web. But uh, right. I found the whole community to be pretty divided, more divided than I thought. Um, I don't really like to use this term, but I guess toxic would be the kind of word where there's a lot of attack vectors on other people. But what has your experience been with the UFO community in general? Well, what would pretty, your advice pretty be? Pretty horrible. I, I mean, <laughs> I feel that um, I was staggered that people who wear the I believe t-shirt and the baseball cap on backwards and say I believe rather than I ask questions uh, would be uh, grateful, interested, and um, receptive to ideas about asking big questions about, about the subject. And they're not, on the whole. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people who are, which is great. Thank you, viewers, royal viewers, patrons. But um, no, they kind of there's a there's a kind of a, and it's also uh, quite aggressive in in and uh, rubbishing um, a lot of personal attacks uh, when you say something that they just plainly don't like. And um, uh, I. It, 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 it's so disappointing for me. Uh, I originally, as a YouTube channel, didn't really go down the kind of UFO storyline very much. My big kind of eye opener was when I started looking at somebody pointed me in the direction of Rendlesham Forest and meeting uh, US Air Force John Burroughs, who was badly injured by exposure to the highly strange by some kind of frequencies, which probably are man-made, but we are still looking at that. You know, well, suddenly I realized it's a really interesting field. And um, it seemed to me that there's a lot of interest in flying saucers and UFOs. So it would be a good subject to do on YouTube. But then the vitriol started coming in going, you don't believe in flying saucers. I, well, uh, no, I'm just asking questions on your behalf, really. And um, this massive two camps of debunkers and bunkers or whatever they are, believers, I think I'd call them. Yeah. And um, uh, probably you feel the same, very much in the middle by doing science. It's like neither side really want us. Mm. Well, the scary part for me is similar to what you just mentioned. I, I I love that story you just mentioned because it's so similar to what I mentioned. Is I'm, I'm bringing these big thoughts up, which is, right. okay, if there are aliens, if they're visiting us, how are they getting here? Speed of light is too slow. I mean, Alpha Centauri is four light years away. That's going to take hundreds of years at uh, conventional yeah. speeds to get yeah. here. That's the closest star. So if there are people coming, if there's aliens coming from another galaxy, there are tens of thousands of light years away. Maybe yeah. longer, like Hundreds, we need something yeah. faster. And I'm going, well, here's how we teleport an object. Here's how we achieve super luminal speeds. Right. And they go, no, no, that's impossible. I'm going, well, wait, you're the one who thinks that this is all this can happen. Like, how can you poo poo these ideas that are out right. there? Right. right. Like, this is the problem. They're not asking the big questions. And they're not also asking, um, which I think that you and I right. both are doing is what does this lead to? What what else can be achieved from this type of technology? Mm -hmm. You know, it can mm -hmm. damage people. I think um, I'm hoping I'm saying this correct, but I think it's like magne magneto hydrodynamic systems uh, can potentially uh, uh -oh. cause radiation and damage to the human body. Definitely scalar weapons are talking about Havana syndrome the last few days, in fact. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. I don't think it's a microwave weapon. I think it's a scalar weapon. Um, and right. the reason for that is that microwaves can't go through uh, concrete walls. Right. So, it, it, but scalars can. Scalar potentials yeah. can just right. go through anything. anything. And so this is the part where I imagine that maybe we're being fed information and it's somewhat accurate, but it's not the exact mm. type of technology that's being used. Right. But the last thing I want to address too is that in the UFO community, and I think it's mostly on the skeptic side, people that think that they're on the side of science that wear the NASA shirts or what have you, but then they don't know anything about what scientific method even means. Right. And they, they go out right. there and they just try to think that the only thing that can be real is whatever they were told on TV or by their trusted authorities. Right. And for those people, I would say that's not how the world works. Like the real truth gets right. out to those people later on through the approved channels and right. they only get a selected kind of filter of the truth. At least that's what I've learned, which has been kind of alarming. So I, I don't know, this is a challenge. And I wonder every day, uh, probably the number one question I ask myself is how do we get this out there? How do we get the information out there? How do we wake people up? And, uh, you know, I, I think there's various different mechanisms, but right. uh, if people are out there and, hey, you want to throw some comments in the chat or, in the, or throw some <laughs> in your comments yeah. down below in the in the comments section, let us know, because I think yeah. we both I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, viewers, exactly. Please comment. I mean, um, um, you know, Ashton and I fuck up. I mean, but that's good. You know, it's good to make to uh, make mistakes. Um, I say things that are slightly wrong. I'm sure we all do. And I really, really love you who knows the truth is out there. It tells me what's actually um, right. I mean, so many years I've worked in television where you would be very uh, didactic and very um, you know, have an agenda about your film and people would write and go bollocks and you would never do a follow up. Well, we can do that. We can actually um, listen to you, uh, listen to what you want to say. Listen, maybe I'm also interested in how you want um, science presented. You know, um, are you actually interested in, in, in learning about how these things might work? And I use the word might, you know, because we need to explore those questions. Yeah, I think to air is human. Right. And that's is the yeah. part where a lot of people think that you, they're looking for this infallible hero, especially in the UFO community. You see all these people get elevated, which I have nothing right. against these various people like Commander Fravor, Lou Elizondo, David Raj, right. Ryan Graves. These people have come out and, and said either firsthand or secondhand yeah. stories and their experiences. Yeah. You know, I think that they absolutely have huge benefit. They've they've pushed mm -hmm. the conversation forward, but we can't go and deify people and expect everybody to be perfect out there and expect everybody to to give us all the answers. It's really a matter of self discovery, I think, in terms of finding the science, figuring out how it works, and, and then understanding what these true implications are. So, yeah. I think personally, that's how we get disclosure. Oh. Um, but I, I want to be my confirmation. To I see. mean, I think I would like to yeah. interject there. I think we. We, um, uh, you know, um, trust our mistakes. You know, you're going to hear, I've often said that you actually, when a big reveal actually comes out, when something is undeniably proven, you won't be seeing it on your TV or listening to it on your radio. You'll actually hear it on some form of social media. And, you know, uh, we we spend hours digging into stories um, for you, um, researching behind the news. I, I'm sure you're just the same as me. You read something and you read a key word or a connection between two words and go, oh, what are they really saying there? And you that drives down a creator rabbit hole, uh, which opens up a new field of research for another film. I, it's, it's great fun. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm trying to get better at the, I mean, you're way better than I am at producing YouTube content for sure, but I, I'm working on it. I've become a creator just de facto from kind of right. this investigation that I've put out there. And I think that it's important because that's how we package the content so people can understand it and, and get it down yeah. to earth. Um, real quick, going back to the idea too of like disclosure. Yeah, I think that a lot of people, and I was talking to Pat from Vetted the other day about this as well. That yeah, um, a lot of people from a disclosure perspective think that okay, they're gonna they're gonna get they're gonna say oh, there's these 18 races out there that are communicating with us, and we're in this big sea of life and what have you, and that everyone's right. gonna pop the champagne or whatever. Or we're gonna all celebrate what have you. I think it's just gonna be the way it's really gonna go down is that. 
it, that will get disclosed when everybody accepts it already automatically to been real already. And then people are just going to go, okay, I'm still going to work tomorrow. And that's the, I think the scary truth of it is that right. for a lot of people it won't change anything at all. And this is why I think the technology is the more interesting side to me, at least I still think aliens are cool if they're out there. Yeah. Um, but the technology is the part where it's, if we have super conductivity, room temperature, super conductivity, our computers get thousands of times more powerful. Right. We can end our reliance on fossil fuels. We can potentially have over sure. unity generators. This stuff changes every aspect of my life, like almost overnight. Um, so that's the stuff that excites me uh, related to the whole phenomenon and all of that. Um, I know it's so great. And my wife, who's um, uh, who's an environmentalist artist, she grounds me and goes, you know, uh, stop looking at those stupid aliens. We need to save the only planet we live on. You know, let's get better. And I was going, yeah, you're so right, actually. You know, like, let's go and plant another tree, Dorothy. I mean, it's really, it, it's up, absolutely, absolutely true. You know, I feel that science tends to have lost, has lost its way. And it's so much of it is being funded by government and and uh, defense contractors at the university level. I mean, I, I've got many contacts at big un universities and physics departments, and so many of them are the Lockheed Martin physics department, you know, and they're doing basic science, but tell us what you find, you know, it might be useful kind of thing is, is, is what's really going on behind the scenes. And I, I think, we, yeah, we, we, we need to um, work for, the common good and for for society a lot more rather than uh weaponize all this physics and we yep. and i think we you and i have a a duty to actually um share and educate uh viewers if they let want. me ask you a quick question on what you just mentioned there as well because you brought up uh the lockheed martin physics you know is so right the people that i've talked to said that especially when you're a third-party contractor they can actually just bounce between all kinds of different labs, Lockheed Martin, North of Grumman, Bigelow Aerospace, sure. Boeing, Phantom Works, um, yeah. and, and jump between those. And they sign NDAs when they go to them. Uh, I was watching a podcast from Jesse Michaels with Hal Pudoff and Eric Weinstein. And Eric Weinstein is, I think, somebody that we have to kind of convert over the idea of understanding yeah. that there's suppressed science out there. For someone like him, he we said, there's, how could they keep this secret? You know, how could, why would physicists not come forward and, and talk about this? And uh, do, and do we need new physics that are out there? And he said that if the, if they were hiding this, the government was hiding this, that he would be tuning or you know sharpening his pitchfork. How would you explain to him how this has been suppressed or hidden? And do you think we need new physics to explain it? Oh, I think we need new laws. I think I think I think the um I have this great inside story. So the United States got freedom of information probably in the 50s. It was a very good idea. Uh, and it was specifically freedom of information um for the public to ask questions to government. And they soon sussed that if it's a non-governmental program, you can hide what you want. And I have it on very good authority that under the Tony Blair regime, um in in Great Britain uh, in the 1980s and early 90s that Tony and his advisors went to the US and said, we're thinking of doing freedom of information in the United Kingdom. And they went, ah, good. Mo move the flying saucer to Marconi's warehouse up in Wharton. And they went, oh, yeah, we could do that, couldn't we? Yeah, and then you can't ask questions. And I think and th the other thing that I'm getting uh, – from defense contractors is that, is that there seems to be a way of uh, of having defense contractors having information which they're working on, which they can share with other defense contractors, which are completely outside of government. I think almost they don't trust government and they, they're just looking for funding, really. And I think the science... And the stuff that they're keeping secret, they can share and bounce back between different ones. Obviously, they want to make profit for their own company. But um, there seems to be cross-pollination. That's the impression I get. Oh, 100%. I, I've seen it firsthand, actually. Uh, firsthand experience, I haven't seen the cross-pollination, so to speak, where the right. defense contractors that have the NDAs, they can communicate with one another about some yeah. of the stuff that they are working on. I also believe that they can um, take some of the aspects of what they see in the laboratory and patent them. And I think that's how the, a lot of the patents do get out to the public out there. And then right. they can profit off of that stuff. I mean, I've got a friend who literally advertises producing over Unity devices uh, on his Twitter, Dave Rossi. I'll just give him a quick plug as well. You can take a look at his Twitter okay. if you want, um, which is sure. 
pretty incredible because there's people in the open just going, hey, yeah, we, we I can do some magic and, and make magic and people just ignore it. But then I guess my question is, what do you think the motivations are of the people like your some of your contacts who don't want to be named, who are potentially people that people would know? Why do you think that they're reluctant to come forward? Well, not all, not all of them are. I mean, I think I think there is a a very easy answer to reluctance. I mean, I think they're scared. I think they want to keep their jobs. I think they are uh, have got legal requirements to shut up. Uh, but I think there's also I'm certainly I'm constantly contacted by a, a whole bunch of people um, with very interesting stories um, who you know don't have a mouthpiece on social media and reach out to people like you and me, Ashton, to actually um, go, um, don't tell them who we are, but I can tell you how this works and maybe you could do a film about it. I mean, that literally happens to me every few days. Um, I'm super excited to read um, those emails and super not excited to be compared to being Adam Savage's grandfather. But I mean... <laughs> I know. Look like him. <laughs> uh, I don't. Well, yeah, yeah okay. The, the, the irony thing is that Adam and I are actually roughly the same age. It's just that I've had a better life oh, than he has. That's funny. <laughs> I love it. I oh, know. It, it's just. It. Yeah. It's a. It's a real minefield. All right. Right. Well, that that was an excellent conversation. Keep up the good work. And um, so um, you're obviously uh deeply into scalar. What What's your uh what is that is that your next project or what are you currently working on? Yeah, I think that I had uh, retired from the MH370 investigation back on the 10 year anniversary. Although, it was, you know, I did a couple of small things after that. But okay. for me, I think the topic was so um, polarizing that I needed to just step away from it, let people absorb the information. I should think that society needs to catch up a little bit to realize right. the depths of deception that we are potentially being fed on a daily basis, especially through the mainstream media. And then I kind of change gears into the science right. side of it, is that if right. this is real, we can teleport an object that's the size of a 777, then there's got to be a lot of science out there that will corroborate it. Right. And that's what I've been digging into. This has led me to scalar physics, yeah. which I've now been digging into. And I'm just going to kind of follow the path and see where it goes. And if there is some other big investigation that comes up that has a real world event related to it, potentially we'll dig into it. But it's got to be something that I'm interested in. For me, I've always just been interested in the science, nature, reality, you know, how these if, if there are crafts visiting us, how they're floating or in my right. opinion, I think a lot of the stuff is our technology, China's technology, Russia's technology, and that it's advanced to the point now where we're calling it drones. But if people were to actually see it firsthand, they're going to wonder, you know, is that a ball of plasma? Is mm -hmm. that uh, a flying saucer? Is yeah. you know, what exactly are we looking at there? Um, so I want to figure that out and I want to push the conversation forward in the UFO realm so that, that people can begin to understand the implications of what all of this stuff means. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will help get us to the disclosure that I think that everybody's out there wants to find out the skeptics and the believers alike, which is what's the nature of the UFO phenomenon? Uh, <laughs> I hope it happens. I mean, yeah, we need to bring together the, that community. And um, if they just dip their toe into a bit of science a bit more often and actually are a bit more open to what actually, how how does it work? It would be the classic TV program. Flying saucer, how does it work? You know, um, I think they might begin to understand uh, some of the, uh, get some of the answers that they're desperately seeking and and stop um knocking on senators doors going tell us the truth because they're not going to they're why would they i mean they they're just not um uh, the the answers lie in understanding what we observe and um the physics behind it i mean and so yeah great good and i think you very much were kind of deep dived into into looking at proving what you said, but uh, and and that's helped you actually come up with new stuff and for your channel to carry on d d diving into science. I, and that's how I feel. I do a film and it leads through discussion immediately to another one. I go, oh, oh yeah, okay, that's good. That's a good another good question to answer for viewers. So th Absolutely. thank you very much today. It's 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 great not only to talk about some very interesting science, but also to address the uh, what it's like as a creator 
here on social media dealing with difficult subjects um, and occasionally with quite difficult audience because we want to connect to people. Um, we want to get the science out there. So brilliant. I'm so, so pleased to talk to you today. Thank you very much. Yeah, you too, Professor Simon. And I hope that there are some of these uh, celebrities and disclosure advocates in the UFO community that are watching. I hope they listen to the conversation that we had about this, because I think that we shed a lot of light on a lot of important topics. And I think that this is, can be a mechanism to help them to achieve their goals. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, Ashton, for openly revealing your journey to a bigger truth. What you've just heard is why social media might bring you the answers that you've been searching for. Raw, uncut, often flawed, but independent of government secrecy. Nuggets of knowledge to confirm the truth. And that's your answer. Keep watching the channels of the YouTube social media truth seekers, because maybe just maybe the truth that you are seeking is here. Social media confirmation needs you. It needs you right now to press the like button. That might sound irrelevant, but what it does is it shows YouTube, owned by Google, one of the biggest corporations in the world, that this is important. That this is important to you. Share with friends, get involved by leaving a comment or asking a question. And subscribe, not just to me, but to all your favorite creators, because they are the most likely source of bringing you and the world evidence of confirmation. You are more part of this journey than you might realize, because the truth needs to be out here.